Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me refresh my iPad over here and see if I am on. There we go. All right. Let me know when you jump on. I see a couple people coming on. Hello. Welcome in, guys. Let me know if you can hear me and see me all right. We will get started in just a couple of minutes once everybody hops on. All right. How's everybody doing today? Happy Saturday. Is anybody working on anything this weekend? Doing anything fun? All right. I am so, so excited to show you this cookie today. I have been waiting for this one. Um, hey, Becky, how are you? All right. Awesome. Sharon can hear and see me. Hello. How are you doing today? All right, I'll show you guys our cookie here while everybody's jumping on to cute little mushroom house cookie. I am so excited for this one. I had so much fun making this piece and uh, I was just really, really excited to show you guys and to see your interpretations because there's so many different ways that you can change this up for the design as far as colors and decorations and accents. So I knew you guys are going to have so much fun with the creativity of this one and incorporating your own design elements. Got to kind of get to be your own architect for this one. So it's going to be really, really cute. All right. Hey, Barbie, how are you? Yes, please share, guys. Share it to any of your uh, cake and sugar groups, cookie groups, um, onto your page. would be awesome. I would very, very much appreciate it. All right. So let me know also if you're going to be playing along today, if you're going to be creating along with me, or if you're planning to watch today and make the piece another time. Hey, Jessie Ann. All right. All right. So we will start here in just a few. Okay. Make sure that you guys have your template. Um, we are going to be using the template to cut out the fondant today, uh, or gum paste, whatever you want to use. Uh, so make sure you have that ready to go. It's the same one that you use to bake your cookie, so also have your cookie pre-baked and ready to go. Hi, Mimi. How are you? It's rainy Southern California. <laughs> awesome. Sharon's going to be making her cookie along with us today. That's fantastic. Hi, Carol. Carol's going to be playing along too. Awesome. Grandma Barbara's here too. Hi, Grandma Barbara. All right, so we will go ahead and get started here in just a second. I'm so excited uh, that you guys, some of you guys are going to be playing along with me today and creating along with me. I can't wait to see your interpretations of this piece because like I said, there is a lot of ways that you can customize this and change this up depending on your design choices and how you would uh, like it to look and how you want to customize it. So it's going to be really, really fun. I also have my iPad set up down here. Um, so if you see me glancing down, that's why because I can be able to see your comments as it comes through. Um, but mom is also here and dad too. Um, to read out any comments and questions that you have. So any questions that you have throughout the whole demo, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. All right, Becky is going to be making hers this afternoon. Awesome. That's great. So uh, we will start out with just the basics. Of course, we always start out with the introduction of ice malt. Of course, we're using our steamy ice malt today for this cookie. That is how we're going to achieve the stained glass mushroom top. So uh, that is what we are going to be melting and pouring over our cello sheets. Um, but remember when working with ice malt to definitely wear your gloves because when you melt it, it's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so definitely wear your gloves while you're working with it. I just use my microwave to melt it. So it's super easy because this is already pre-cooked and tempered. There's no temperatures, there's no recipes, nothing. All you have to do is melt it down. So it makes it really easy because we already pre-cook and temper the ice malt for you. So it's already in those hard candy tiles. Uh, ice malt really is just a sugar-free hard candy and we make it crystal clear, super easy to use and pre-tempered. So it's just going to be uh, the easiest possible thing that you can do when working with ice malt to just melt it and go. I melt it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals. So um, you can flavor this, you can color it, which we'll be talking a little bit about once we start um, and you can customize it to what you need but for this project we really want the pattern of the cello sheet to shine through so we are going to be just using clear today but of course if you didn't want to use the cello sheet and you wanted to do just a plain glass window in this project or any of your other gingerbread houses um, and other cookie projects you can definitely just use a plain color or clear of ice malt and that will give you a lot of different design options as well all right uh let's see going back through the comments because i saw a few here Kathy says, hi, see me and all. I won't be able to play the whole time, but wanted to watch. Welcome. I hope you enjoy. Hey, Evelyn is here. Hi, Evelyn. 
Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn is happy to enjoy watching mm -hmm. today from snowy Toronto. Uh, and Teresa Comfort is here too. Hi, Teresa. All right, so yeah, again, we are going to be making our uh, mushroom house with the stained glass mushroom top, which I'm really excited about. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera down and we will get to work on this cookie. All right, so just bear with me for just a second while I get this all uh, figured out and lined up. All right. Let me see. There's a slight lag. So I just want to make sure it is all working okay. Make sure everything's straight before we go. Just waiting for my iPad to catch up so I can watch it. Sabine's going to work along. Awesome! I can't wait to see it, Sabine. Oh, Perfect. It smells so good over here. <laughs> it does, right, Gingerbread? <laughs> all right. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here is our cookie again. So you can see we have a lot of different elements going on in this piece. Um, so we have the uh, decorations of the, on the cookie itself are mainly going to be made out of either fondant or gum paste. You can even use modeling chocolate if you want to, whatever your preferred medium is. And we're also going to be using the isomal and the cello sheets to create that gorgeous sort of glass ceiling of that stained glass mushroom top. Uh, I'll show you how I make all of the different elements using molds and doing some hand sculpting. We're going to be painting. We're going to be putting it all together onto our our cookie so you can see it is that cookie in the background um, and yeah we're gonna be putting it all together but feel free to vary your design choices if you have any other elements or molds or decorations that you would like to use in your piece I am uh, definitely supportive of that because I love seeing you guys's creativity come through and making the pieces your own all right so first off we're gonna talk about the cookie so we have our cookies pre-baked Okay, so this is my cookie that I am going to be using today. So you can see, uh, same size and everything. I used the template that I drew. Um, so you got that with the accessory kit of this project. So if you did get the accessory kit um, from our website, it'll have all of the specific sort of tools and molds and things that you need for this project, any of the specialty items. But we're going to be using that template that came with it. Um, and I just printed that out and cut it out on paper. Can, um... Can they get a copy of it even if they didn't get the kit? Yeah, absolutely. If you need a copy of the template, I am more than happy to share that. Just uh, send me a message or an email, and I am happy to do that. I'm just trying to make this a little bit straighter here. There we go. It always bugs me if the camera angle isn't straight, even though I know it doesn't matter too much when we're actually making stuff. All right, so um, we are going to be using that template. Um, I used it to cut out and bake my cookie, and then I'm also going to be using it for the fondant. And um, the cookie that I'm using is my sculpted gingerbread cookie. So that is going to be, it's like a sculpted and a construction gingerbread. So it's going to be very strong um, once you bake it. And I made it, it doesn't really matter how thick that you make this cookie. You can use whatever your normal sort of amounts are for this uh, or for normal thickness, normal recipe, all of that can be applied. So you can use my recipes, um, and I think I made mine about a quarter of an inch thick, so it is pretty thick of a cookie, and um, that's totally up to you if you want to vary that. You can use your own cookie recipe. You can really apply this to whatever you normally do for your cookies, but if you want to follow mine exactly, I used my construction gingerbread, which is available on my website, so um, you're more than welcome to use that. I baked it, and I let it cool. I think I did underbake this just slightly, so it's slightly softer than I normally would work with it, but it's okay. Um, the humidity also sometimes gets to it, but we're going to roll with it. I did actually um, reinforce the back of it for that reason, and you can do this anyway with some isomalt. So all I did on the back um, before we started is I poured some isomalt just in drops kind of all over the cookie. And then I carefully, wear your gloves, flipped it over while the isomalt was still nice and hot. And I pressed it flat on a silicone mat. And that just flattened it so that the cookie is level and uh, it just reinforces the back. So I do that whenever I want to reinforce my cookies, whether they are a little bit underbaked like this one came out or if it is just really humid or you just want that extra strength. Isomalt is really good for reinforcing your cookies. So I just kind of pressed it once. I flipped it over to make sure that it's nice and flat and you can keep adding layers of that you can do as many layers as you want to just add more and more strength all right so we are gonna move this over we're gonna cover our cookie first with our um, sugar paste now I'm using gum paste but you can use fondant you can use gum paste you can use modeling chocolate really whatever you prefer to work with modeling chocolate will definitely be the yummiest option um, that you can work with, but 
It is a little bit more temperamental, so if you're not as big of a fan of the modeling chocolate, fondant works really good if you're going to be actually eating this cookie. This is going to be more of a display cookie because there is so much work going into it, but you definitely can um, change that up depending on what you want to use. You can flavor the fondant too if you want to. All right, my gum paste is a little bit solid, so I'm going to pop this in the microwave for about five second intervals just to slightly soften it. I'm also using some vegetable shortening on my mat and on my hands to keep it nice and pliable. All right. And I use that microwave very sparingly, but it does help to soften your sugar paste as well as using some of that vegetable shortening to condition it. So I'm just putting some on the mat and on my hands. And I'll just knead this until it gets nice and pliable again. I'm using white first, and then we'll move on to the red um, so that I don't just start with the red and then stain everything red. All right. And I'm just going to start to roll this out. I like to roll it out on my silicone mat a little bit first, and then I'll transfer it onto my cutting mat to actually cut the pieces out just because it's a little bit easier to roll on a silicone mat. And of course you can change up these colors depending on what you want, or you can do everything white and then paint it afterwards as well. Alright, that should be big enough. And I'm just going to grab my cutting mat. So I'm just using one of those plastic um, cutting mats, just really simple to work on and it's okay if it's not perfectly even or perfectly smooth because we're adding tons and tons of texture onto this piece okay i got it to fit before how did i have it i'm not worrying about the top of the mushroom so i could even move that up if i need to because we're doing the top in red flip this over so you can see the finished one here all right and then i'm going to use my exacto knife to cut this out now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut the underneath. So if you want to, what you can actually do is take your template and cut along those red lines. So when we're actually making the cookie, we only cut to the black lines so that we have the whole base. But now that we are done with making the cookie, what I'll do is I'll cut to that red line and that's where the red and the white are going to meet up. So that way you have kind of two halves of one piece. So this part will be the red and this part will be the white. I don't worry about that other one yet because that's more for impressioning, that other red line. Alright. And I'm just going to cut that out. I'm just doing this kind of quick because I like to perfect it once it's actually on the cookie. And I can trim and adjust. The beauty of this specific cookie is that it's really, really forgiving with all that texture on it. Okay, so I'm just following this bottom half. Make sure my template is in the right place here. Like that. Mr. Bean would like to know how thin uh, or thick are you rolling your fondant? Um, I can tell you. Let me measure it. Here, let me get that to release. I rolled mine. I'm going to go in centimeters here. A little less than half of a centimeter. So that's what about an eighth of an inch. About an eighth of an inch thick. But you can do it to whatever you like. I do go a little bit on the thicker side because it's going to take the impression a lot easier. Um, and you get a lot more depth out of it if you have a little bit more that way. So I do go a little on the thicker side, and that's why it's nice that you can flavor the fondant if you wanted to use fondant, um, so that you can add powdered flavorings or whatever you like to the piece. Alright, I'm going to grab some piping gel, and I use that to stick onto my cookies because um, I'm not eating these, so I don't mind not having a little bit of extra 
something on it but you can use icing if you want to you could use chocolate you could even flood these instead and just paint on the detail so if you are prefer piping and you want to add the details in paint afterwards you can definitely just pipe these and then add all the uh, 3d decorations on top of that instead like i said it's very easy to customize to what you like to do okay so i'm just adding piping gel and a pretty generous layer all the way out to the edges on the bottom half of my cookie and then we're going to take our gum paste or fondant or modeling chocolate whatever you have and i'm just laying this so the rounded side on the kind of sort of towards the mushroom top is not going to reach all the way to the edge because this other half where is it where we're going to cut out the red wraps are up and around it and that just adds a really nice depth so it's okay if it doesn't reach the edge but the pointier thinner side over here should reach the edge and you can just kind of manipulate it you can kind of push it back in and smooth it if it overruns the edges or you can um, make the edges show more or less depending on the look that you like okay those powder flavors that we got from uh, more than cake yeah they Mango. work really, oh really gosh. good. That could be delicious. Really yummy. Yeah, their flavors are awesome. More than cake. All right, so I'm just using my template. You can cut these two halves out, but I'm not really too worried about it. I'm just going to kind of do a slight curved line here. And I'm going to do this before we add the red so that it doesn't dry too much to imprint nicely. Okay, so see how I just kind of separated the top from the bottom a little bit and you won't see it as much now as you will once we shade it that's what the shading is really going to help to bring out but the deeper that you put that imprint the more visible it'll be i also try and round the edges down a little bit so it's not too flat so like kind of where it wraps around the cookie i'll just tilt my tool around those corners and now we're going to just start to add some lines so i'm going to go curved with the sides of the mushroom, so kind of like you would draw any sphere. The center is gonna be fairly straight, but once it gets out towards the edges, you're gonna have more and more curve to it. And they can overlap, they can be different lengths. I'm not really too specific about kind of where these go, but I do want it to go right up to that bottom edge. Go. like that and I do some of them deeper some of them lighter again just following the contours I'll lift this up a little bit so you can see that better in the light okay so there we go All right, so we are going to now go in and do some underneath the mushroom. We're kind of going to do the same thing, except we're going to flute it up and out, okay? And I'm going kind of right side for you guys. So I'm going to start towards the middle and just flute it up and out. So we're kind of going in opposite directions of what we just did. Center is going to be a little bit more straight up. And then as we go off to the other side, we're going to angle it towards that other side. I'm going to flip it to me just for a second so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. And again, let me know if you have any questions in the chat there. And I'll just kind of do a little bit more off to the side. I'm putting a slightly deeper indent in this area here because you're going to have sort of a perspective change from the background or kind of the back of the mushroom to the front part and that'll make more sense once we shade it a little bit but you can kind of see how over here looks a little bit different than the very center um, because it's farther back so i just like to sort of accentuate that And then at any point, if you feel like you distorted it too much around the edges, you can just go back with your tool or even with a straight edge tool like your little spatula and you can smooth that back and kind of push it back into shape. There we go. Okay, 
already okay so far? Let me know. And that's just going to act as a nice base for our mushroom. And we'll accentuate those lines a little bit more now as well as when we paint. Okay, so just following the grain. We don't want any crisscrossing happening with this. We just want it to be kind of vertical with a slight curve as we get closer out to the edges. And gum paste does dry faster than other mediums, so if you are using gum paste, you may have to work a little faster. If you're using fondant or modeling chocolate, you'll have a lot more time to work with it. So just use that at your preference. Okay, we are going to cut out our red section next. So I'm going to put this off to the side and grab my red. I also find that if you uh, make your fondant or gum paste pieces a little thicker, they hold their shape a lot better too. So when you go to cut them out and then transfer them onto the cookie, it holds the shape way better and it doesn't stretch and distort quite as much, which is nice. Okay. So just kneading this up. You could also use fondant and add some Tylose into it or some CMC powder that will help to um, make the fondant dry a little firmer and a little bit faster but depending on how much you add it won't be quite as much or quite as quick as the um, gum, uh, gum paste would be okay so about the same thickness so that they line up the red and the white kind of sit next to each other make sure my template is going to fit on here this is be a little bit wider Okay, that should be good. Transfer this on. And I always like to smooth it or roll it a little bit down onto the cutting mat once I transfer it so it sticks really well. Now, my advice for cutting out really thin pieces like this is to cut the center out first. It always seems to hold its shape a little bit better if the center line is cut out first. So I'm going to cut out the inner circle and then the outer edge. Okay, Sid, um, Jody's wondering, what yeah. paste do you recommend? She's never used it before. Thank you. Um, it's really up to you. It's going to work differently in different climates as well, so that's kind of your choice. But I would say for a beginner, fondant is probably going to be the easiest to work with just because it doesn't dry overly fast. It's not as temperature sensitive as modeling chocolate, and um, it's just going to have a really nice impression for the shapes and things that we're doing here. So I would say fondant. Gum paste has a lot more elasticity generally than fondant does, which can be nice for sculpting. But we're not really doing too much 3D here. We're really just impressioning and imprinting. And then um, we're doing a little bit of sculpting with like the birdhouse and the mushrooms, but not really as much as would be needed or necessary to only use gum paste. And gum paste will dry really hard. Yes. So it's good for displays and show pieces and competition pieces. It's going to distort a little bit. It's okay. We can fix it. So just try and keep it in as best of a shape as possible. Perfect. We're going to add our piping gel. It's going to be kind of a close fit between the white and the red at the bottom area where the two meet up but that's okay that's why we made it nice and thin around that bottom and I'm letting the piping gel brush against the white of the fondant too just to give it another sort of attachment area I like piping gel because it's not too bumpy where if, if you, whereas if you use um, chocolate or royal icing you can sometimes see the shapes of the kind of lumps of it underneath so I'm releasing the fondant from the work mat first with my tool just so that it's not sticking anywhere because when I go to pick it up, if it's really sticking to a certain spot, it's going to stretch. Okay. I 
just very, very sort of basically lay it in first. You can also lay this on the cookie and get it situated before you put the piping gel on and then just kind of lift it up and add the piping gel underneath, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of manipulating and stretching and pushing the fondant into the places that I need it to go. Okay, the piping gel can hold it into place really well though, so I'm just being gentle not to distort it too much if I have to peel a section up. I don't mind seeing the edges of my cookie, I think it kind of adds uh, just like a more genuine cookie look. A lot of times I will cover it up and or paint it the same color as whatever my decorations on top are to make it blend in, but for this I wanted it to look more like a cookie and be more obvious that it's a cookie rather than trying to be sort of a trick of the eye that it's not really a cookie. I'll go more realism. All right, there we go. So just closing that seam between the white and the red is really going to help to make sure that it looks like one piece. And then when we shade it later, we'll add some darkness there to make sure that it's nice and kind of blended. You can even add a little indent kind of following so that both pieces look more natural. Okay, and there we go. I'm not gonna add any texture to the top of the mushroom, but if you wanted to, you could. You could also go back and paint some polka dots on it or something like that. I just really wanted the pattern of the, tr the cello sheet to uh, really be the focal point. So I just wanted kind of a red edge around it to make it more obvious that that's kind of the color of the mushroom. And then the cello sheet is the, more the focal point. And of course, you can forget about the whole altogether and just make this one solid cookie rather than adding the ice melt in. But you guys know I have to add the ice melt in. <laughs> I just love how it looks. All right, so what do you guys think so far? Okay, we got our cookie all put together here. I'm going to swap out my mat. Mom, you don't have any um, hand wipes, do you? Or I'll, even a Lysol wipe is fine just to clean off my hands. All right. I have another silicone mat waiting off to the side that doesn't have Crisco on it, so we'll grab that. hands off before I grab that mat. Everybody doing okay so far? For those of you who are following along, any questions, thoughts? Let me check my comments here. All right. So I'm just, usually uh, you want to completely clean off your hands so that no grease is going to get on the ice melt areas. But I'm just... Wiping it off with a wet wipe here. Ice malt and grease do not mix. Generally, I mean, you can use it to not get it to not stick to things and stuff like that, but we don't want it to mix in or get on anything that we're melting. All right. I'm putting my ice malt in the microwave. Now, I did preheat it a little bit. So it was a little bit warm to begin with, but you'll want to go for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid, until it's boiling. All right. So just check it every 15 to 30 seconds, depending on how strong your microwave is. All right. And I'm going to be switching a non-stick mat. So this is our non-stick baking liner mat and what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that when we pour the ice mold on it it doesn't stick. You can use the silicone mat if that's all you have but I don't really like pouring big surfaces or like wide surfaces on a silicone mat because it's not going to release quite as easy and it also is going to kind of wave and bubble up from the heat. It can get air trapped underneath it. So I like to use the non-stick mat a lot better. It just is going to work a lot easier for you. Oops. 
Okay, we're also gonna be grabbing our cello sheets. So cello sheets are an amazing, amazing product from Icing Images. This is one of my designs um, that I created and then we have on our site where you got it in the accessory kit if you used that. And so um, cello sheets are really amazing. They are very unique because they are totally edible, but they're also totally clear. So you can get some really cool effects with isomalts, but also you can use them on their own in other ways too. Uh, what we're going to be doing is first taking it off of the plastic backing. Now the thing with cello sheets is that you want to keep it sealed as much as possible. You don't want it out in the air until you're ready to use it. So just keep this in an airtight container whenever you're not using it. Even between just cutting and getting other things ready, if it's going to be more than a minute, you want to keep it so that it is um, protected from the moisture or the dryness of your climate because they can curl from too much humidity or too little humidity. So as long as I keep it in a sealed container, I find I don't have any problem and I just use it right away. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna figure out how big of a section that we need. You can use your template for this if you don't wanna get cookie on your excess pieces. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto. If you're not sure which side is the cello sheet side and which side is the plastic backing side, you can take a little bit of water on your finger and just tap it to the edge of your sheet, just kind of the corner, and the cello sheet side will get sticky. All right, you want to score the paper first to get it to release kind of like a sticker sheet. And then I just peel the segment that I want off. This will go back into an airtight container. I usually, for a couple minutes at a time, I can store them underneath the silicone mat because it's super airtight under there. Okay, I can see that that's going to work. You can trim this out perfectly to begin with, or you can trim it out afterwards. It doesn't really matter which order that you do it in. Okay, so the cello sheet has to be poured after it comes off of the backing. So take it off the backing first and then position it kind of in the spot that you want the pattern to be showing. Okay, I'm just gonna trim it afterwards. So that will be perfect. Okay, so we want to always, when you're using clear colors especially, bring the ice melt to a boil and then let it settle. So it should be a nice rolling boil in the microwave, um, nice big bubbles, and that will bring out all of the air. So if you have any air mixed in, um, that will bring it all out. I don't stir it. I don't mix in any additional air. I just let it do its thing in the microwave until it comes to a boil. And then I take it out at room temperature and let it sit until it stops boiling. This one stopped boiling in the microwave because I didn't take it out right away, but you just want to make sure there's no bubbles moving or popping. If they're just sitting there that's okay but you don't want any actively boiling when you pour it otherwise you're just going to be pouring bubbles into your finished piece all right so we're going to pour our window and then we're going to make all of our decorations in the meantime while it's cooling all right so you can see now the ice mold is not boiling or bubbling any it's just nice and liquid and so we're just going to pour enough to fill the window you don't have to fill it to the very tippy top usually i just pour enough to cover the bottom with cookies, sometimes I'll go a little bit higher just so that there's not a huge indent or divot. You don't have to spread it all the way into the cracks and crevices. You can use your silicone tool or a toothpick after it's poured to just help to spread it. If you are nervous about over pouring onto your cookie, you could always pour this first and then decorate after it's cool instead of doing it kind of in the middle of the process like we are. And that way, if you do spill over, you can just cover it up with your decorations. But we're not totally done with the cookie, so I know that I can position some decorations over any poor spot, spots if I accidentally overflow it or drip on the cookie or anything like that. All right, if you have any surface bubbles that kind of rise to the top, you can very, very quickly torch those away. Don't leave the torch on the fondant or the cookie or the um, exposed cello sheet too long. So as long as you keep moving, it's kind of like a hairdryer. You don't want to burn anything. So you just kind of go quickly over the top and that should pop any bubbles. And we're going to leave that to cool at room temperature for probably about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how cool or warm your room is. So we're just going to slide that over and let that cool. And then afterwards, we'll trim off the excess. Okay. So I'm just going to move that onto another flat surface while we make all of our other decorations. All right, everybody's still with me. Everybody doing good. Okay. 
All right, we are getting our fondant back out and I'm gonna be, or our gum paste, I'm going to be using the mold pieces first because I like to put these in the freezer before I take them out to keep them from distorting. So we're gonna get those going first and then make all of our little mushrooms and vines and birdhouse after. Okay, you can pre-color the fondant or gum paste if you would like to, or you can use white like I am and then just paint it. All right. I'm just going to use very small amounts of vegetable shortening this time. Not really rubbing it on the mat, just on my hands. Just to condition it, and you can rewarm this at any time if you need to. So this is our uh, kind of cottage door and window mold. This is made out of a piece that I sculpted uh, out of clay and then uh, made the mold for, so that way I could kind of make it to the size that I wanted, and I really like how it came out. I think it would be so cute. Um, it's really cute in the wood kind of texture, but you could do it in a gray and do kind of like a stone. You can paint the little accents on it with metal hinges and uh, things like that if you wanted to. You could fill in the window um, sort of panes with ice malt if you wanted to, so there's a lot of different ways that you can customize this mold. And of course you can use it with other mediums as well. You don't have to just use it with fondant or gum paste. You can pour ice malt in it, you can pour chocolate in it, you can use whatever mediums you like. You can even bake cookies in these. You can actually press your sculpted gingerbread cookie dough or any cookie dough into the piece or into the mold and then bake it right in the mold because the molds are high heat for ice molds. So you can actually make all the elements for your decorated uh, mushroom cookie out of cookie too. Okay, so I'm just kind of filling this. I didn't fill it all the way to the top. I just took a ball of my gum paste and pressed it in so that it's not too thick. And then I'll also take a smaller piece for the window. The nice part is if you don't, it's better to do too little than too much because if you don't have enough, you can just add more to the back and nobody's gonna see if there's a seam. So I'm just kind of using my knuckle to press this down and in. You can take it out now, but sometimes it distorts a little bit just because our um, molds have a lot of detail and they're really deep. So what I'm going to do is freeze this for a few minutes, and that way when it comes out, it's a little bit firmer, and it holds that shape better. All right. Mom, would you mind putting this in the freezer for me? And it'll depend how thick you make these pieces, but I would check it every five minutes or so. It'll probably take about ten minutes. Thank you. All right. So let's see, we have all of our other elements too. And again, feel free to customize these. I'll kind of give you little uh, variations of each piece as we go, but feel free to um, exclude any of these or add more of something, whatever you like. Okay, we're gonna start first with our little chimney. So I'm just gonna take a piece of the gum paste and kind of roll a tube. Okay, that's sort of like an elongated teardrop. It gets wider at one edge. ball tool. Okay, I'm going to use my umbrella tool and just add a little indent to the top of it. You can use your ball tool to widen that. And you can use any sculpting tools for this. I'm just using my silicone ones because that's what I have on hand all the time, but you can use regular plastic or metal sculpting tools for this. And I'm just going to add a couple of lines by pressing my palette knife into the gum paste and then rolling it so that it kind of wraps all the way around to add some little details into the sort of stovepipe chimney. Like that. And we can flatten that out just a little bit so that it doesn't roll around. And we will cut that to the right angle once we have um, everything all together, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Kinda looks like a little worm. <laughs> but that'll be our chimney, so super easy. I kind of went for easier, more blocky shapes, and then we really add in the detail with the paints. That's where it comes in. All right, we're gonna make some little mushrooms next. And of course, you're working in your own environment, your own kitchen, feel free to take more time with these, as much time as you like. Okay, I'm gonna make two little mushroom uh, stems here, so just kind of getting smaller as it goes to the where the cap of the mushroom is going to be. One of them I'll do a little bit taller than the other one. And I'll just curve them slightly. Flatten 
flattening them down just a little bit. We're going for kind of a bas relief style, which is like a uh, two dimensional piece, but with three dimensional details. So we're really kind of flattening, but keeping a lot of the dome shapes, a lot of the texture showing through. So it's sort of in the middle of 2D and 3D. All right, our little mushroom caps actually we're going to make out of red, so I'll leave those to dry a little bit. That is one thing that I like about gum paste is it doesn't take long for it to dry and set up. I'm going to do the red at the end though so that I don't get red on my fingers. Let's see what else. We're going to make our, we'll do our vines once we actually put the pieces on our um, mushroom because those are really tiny. But we'll do our birdhouse, how about that? So first off, what you're going to want to do is figure out how tall your mushroom cookie is because we're going to want to make our square for the birdhouse the same height. Okay, so kind of the square base of it, the brown square there, because we're going to do a little bit of an optical illusion. So this is a little bit too short, so I'm going to add some more to it. I'm just going to keep going until I have a ball that's about the same height or slightly higher than the side of your mushroom house. Okay, so I can kind of feel it or you can use some sort of flat device. That should be about good. Put this one back over here. I'm going to take my little fan and put the fan on my mushroom just to help it dry faster. Okay, now I'm just going to use my straight edge of my palette knife here to make a little square. You can also cut it, which will be the ultimate kind of points at the corners if you want it really, really pointed. Okay, there's nothing really too harsh about this piece. It's all kind of soft and whimsical, so I'm not worrying about the points being really harsh either. I just kind of worked that into a cube shape, making sure I'm not pressing down on it too flat that it's going to be way lower than the finished piece. Okay, now I'm going to grab one of my paint brushes and I'm going to use the end of my paint brush, the round end, to add a circle right in the center. You can even kind of widen it a little bit by moving your paintbrush in circles. That's going to be sort of the door of the birdhouse. And I'm going to take a little tube right beneath that as sort of the step in front of the birdhouse that the birds can land on. So just a tiny little sort of tube. We can use some piping gel to adhere that, or you can use any kind of edible glue that you prefer, if you like to use alcohol or water or extract, whatever you like is fine. Okay, and I'm just going to attach that right below the little door hole that we put in. Like that. And of course, you can use molds for all of these elements, or if you already have molds, for some cute sort of cottage style uh, decorations, you can definitely, definitely use those. But I like to make things by hand a lot of the times in addition to molds because it just helps it look a little bit more freeform. And then the molds complement it for the more intricate pieces that you don't want to spend quite as much time on. It really helps to save time with the more detailed pieces having the molds. All right, I'm also going to take just a little piece of my paste and make another tube that's slightly longer than the one I just made. That's going to be what's going to sort of be the hanger of the birdhouse. And we'll use that a little bit later, but we're just going to put it off to the side to start drawing. All right, I think other than the vines, we just have our red elements next. So I'm going to save the vines to finish in a little bit and we'll get our red out. And I'm going to make some little teardrop shapes, kind of like triangular teardrops, 
for the tops of the mushrooms. A little bit too big. So I'm rolling a ball first. And then kind of ah, dropping it. <laughs> kind of rolling it to a point like a teardrop first. And then I just flatten it slightly. Kind of make sure the point of the teardrop is not too sharp. It's more of just creates like a triangular shape. You can use your little palette knife tool if you want to accentuate any of the edges or flatten them out a little. And I'll use my piping gel, which I should bring back over here instead of reaching for it. Add a little bit to the top, the skinnier side of the white stem that we made. And I sort of press the mushroom top, the mushroom cap to contour around the base so that they sit fairly flush with each other. So there's kind of an indent in the back of the red piece that we made. Since they're both still pliable, they will go together really nicely. You can add little white dots of gum paste or fondant or modeling chocolate for the dots, but I find it easier to paint them. So we're gonna use the base white a little bit later to paint. Okay, do the same thing on. This one. Everybody doing good so far? Anybody have questions? I love making little pieces like this. I think, feel like it's very sort of meditative. You just kind of keep messing with it and simplifying the shapes until they come out really cute. Again, I kind of tried to go for like a st simplified style, but then we add a lot more detail with the painting. That's kind of how I like to do my a lot of my projects and pieces is adding most of the depth and character into them with the painting style because I love shading and adding all those details on just brings it to life for me okay so we got our two little mushrooms down there we're gonna add the roof of the birdhouse now the roof of the birdhouse does not have to go be as thick as the cube that we made because the cube is actually going to go up to the side of the cookie, but then the roof is going to sit on top of the cookie. So you don't need it to be quite as thick. We're again doing kind of an optical illusion. I didn't want the birdhouse to be completely suspended up in the air hanging out off of the bottom because that would be more prone to breaking. So I'm just going to, this time I'm going to cut, since I want the edges of this one to be a little bit sharper. So I'm just kind of flattening it out with my fingers, or you can use a rolling pin. And then I'm going to cut, figure out where the middle is, and cut corners off. Let's see if that's a good size. I think that's pretty good. Might make it a little bit shorter, just so it's not too tall. There we go. And all this can be adjusted because the fondant or gum paste or whatever you're using isn't going to completely set up for at least a couple hours if you're in humidity like me, maybe a little bit less if you're not, but... I'm also going to add just a couple of lines, um, like sort of rivets going down. Let's see, I had another non ice malt caked tool. I'm just going to add a couple of vertical lines on the birdhouse roof just to add some interest. And that will be perfect. All right. Feels like our cookie is just about dry. Would you mind grabbing my mold from the freezer whenever you get a sec? Okay. I'm gonna slide my cookie back over. Now I did have the fan on it, so it probably went a little bit faster. So if yours isn't 
cooled yet. Don't stress about it. Just wait for it to cool. Okay, thank you. All right, so pretty quickly before it starts to sweat, we're going to flex the mold and take out our door. Super cute. And we'll take out our window. Still being gentle because I don't want to break it in half or anything now that it is more solid. Very cute. You might have to bend it back into shape just a little bit because it's still going to be slightly pliable. All right. Let those come back to room temperature and finish sweating if they're going to sweat before you put them on so it doesn't get all sticky. While that's happening, we will take our cookie up. You can see it really doesn't stick to the mat. It's just there so that the ice mold underneath, um, in case it were to go through the um, sheet or anything, doesn't get everywhere. Okay. So we're just going to cut out the excess paper. That. Maybe not on our gold mat. Okay, so that just comes off. All right, and you can do this on your cutting mat, not on your silicone mat if you want. I'm not pressing too hard, so I'm not too worried. You can also just use scissors or even just pull the excess off. I'll probably grab my scissors and just kind of Slide it up and under. You can save those scraps for little projects or you can toss them. Alright. There we go. Look how pretty that is. Super clear. And because it is that clear cello sheet, you just get the complete transparency. And it looks super pretty. Um, now the cello sheets are going to be totally see-through. So remember, if you're going to be having it on a more um, busy background, you will probably want to use a transfer sheet instead because they have a little bit more opacity. Or if you want it totally solid and not see-through at all so that it really has the most impact of colors and contrast, you can use an icing sheet because those are not see-through at all. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go back to our door and window. And now if you are going to be using this mold with any other medium, you can also use a toothpick or silicone tool after you pour or add in your medium and kind of spread it in. So what I would do to make sure there's no air pockets or anything is put a little bit of uh, your chocolate or your ice malt in first and just use your tool to sort of kind of just press it into the fine details of like the handle and around the windows and things so that there's no air pockets and then pour more over the top. If it's something like chocolate, you can also use a paintbrush and kind of paint it in first to give yourself a nice base layer, give it a couple taps and then fill it the rest of the way. You don't want to tap the ice malt because you don't want to slosh it anywhere because it's so hot, but with chocolate that works really good. Same thing with gelatin if you wanted to use gelatin. All right, perfect. So now we're going to attach some of our elements on before adding the vines and painting. So first we will just add a little bit of piping gel to where we want the door to sit. Sometimes I'll go back and add a little bit more as needed. It should really feel like it's grabbing on. Okay, I'm going to have a slight gap and then put the window up higher. Make sure there's enough there. And you could do more windows if you wanted to. That would be really cute. Or leave the window off. Maybe put like a medallion or a little flag or something would be cute. Okay. Gonna add on our mushrooms. Carol Ann says it looks like a cute mushroom birdhouse. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it does kind of have that whole birdhouse look, doesn't it? Jessie says, so cute. Thank Jackie you. says, beautiful. I am so glad you guys like it. I had so much fun putting this together. I had so many ideas of like how I would put it together and what elements to include, and it was really, really hard to decide how I wanted to do this, but I really like how it came out. All right. And let's see, we're going to add our little uh, chimney on. We're going to cut it at an angle. So I'm going to kind of figure out which way my palette knife looks most natural at this angle to cut it. There we go. And that means that this one should attach right on. Make sure it's going straight up. 
We're going to reinforce this with a little bit of ice malt later too. But for now, I'll just kind of attach it on with some piping gel. Alright. Very good. And then we'll attach our little bird feeder down here. Okay, you could do it on either side. I just kind of offset it for the the um because the chimney was on that side. So the bird feeder is going to go on the mat but up against the cookie and then the little top is going to go on top of the cookie. Okay. We'll probably use ice malt to attach that one so I'm going to wait until we get our ice malt back out to put that on just to make it a little bit easier and let's put our vines on. I'm going to put it on this gold mat just so I can move this around easier now that the chimney is on. little bit of vegetable shortening on my hands and you can put on however many vines you want if you want it to look very like overgrown and kind of secret garden look you can add a ton of vines sort of climbing up and over the top vines are also a really good way to hide imperfections so if you have imperfections that you want to distract from vines are a really good way to do that i'm not going to add a ton just for time's sake but you guys can kind of see on my finished one how i added them on and then Elaborate as much as you would like. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue first to the base where the vine's going to start it, kind of beside the house. And then draw little S curves, adding little bits of glue. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Becky says that the hummingbirds are back in Houston today. Oh, no way! They must have heard we were making a birdhouse. <laughs> That's so pretty. All right, I really want to incorporate the door into the piece rather than it just being stuck on there. So I'm going to, that's why I put one of the mushrooms over top and I'm going to put one of the vines over the top as well. All branching out from the same spot like they're kind of a weed growing up or a climbing plant that's growing up. Okay. But this just helps to sort of incorporate your pieces together. A couple of those. And then I'll put one or two up towards where the um, chimney is. The little leaves, I just made teardrop shapes and kind of flattened them, so I'll show you a couple of those too. And this is a really good way to hide the attachment point of the chimney, so if it doesn't completely blend flush in with your piece, you can sort of distract from that. So I have the vines crawling out from the back, so they're kind of tucking behind the cookie a little bit, or at least looking like they're tucking behind the cookie. And then I'll use my glue to just strategically sort of place it. Okay, and once those are green, obviously it'll make a lot more sense. <laughs> All right, and I'll add one more. Maybe kind of overlap them a little bit. Okay. And if you want to add a couple of leaves, I did them pretty tiny, but I'll go a little bit bigger just so you can see. A little better in the camera. I'm gonna roll a ball first. Okay, I'm gonna roll one side to a point. You can do both sides or one side. 
Okay, sometimes it's nice so, uh, with these because there's not really going to be a hidden area where they attach. It just sticks on. I like to do both. And I just flatten that out slightly like a lemon, like a flattened lemon or a flattened football. And then you can use your palette knife or your whatever straight edge that you have. And that's just going to be your little leaf shape. And I just put a couple of those coming off of the vines, not just on the sides of it, but you can put layer some on the tops of them too. So that again, it looks more 3D rather than everything kind of facing you, because in nature, not everything would face you. One little leaf on this top one before we add the birdhouse and we paint. So you can see that it looks cool right now, but it definitely is going to help a lot when we add the paint. It really just brings all of the elements to life and it also helps all of the detail to really be able to be seen. Since it's all, at least right now, one color, or we have some of the red elements going on, but most of the detail is all one color, so we want to really bring out those details. All right, so we'll put our extra gum paste away. Can I bother you for one more Lysol wipe? Okay, I'm putting my ice mold in the microwave so that I can heat it up and we can use that to attach some of our more intricate overhanging pieces. And just look at this at my direction for a minute, make sure everything is straight, which it was not. <laughs> you can bother me for a hundred more Lysol wipes. I appreciate it. And I'm working on the Teflon mat, make sure that you're working on the non-stick mat or the um, silicone mat when you go to do this, because we want to make sure it's going to hold up. I'm going to cut the edges of my birdhouse off, because I think it's a little too wide. And then just tiny bits of ice mold on our silicone tool carefully are going to attach the pieces together. So I'm attaching it to the side of the cookie and then attaching the roof to the top of the cookie. Little string there. And we'll add some more to the back of it too to just to strengthen it. The little um, hanger, I can just use some piping gel since that one's not actually supporting any sort of weight. Okay. And I'll probably leave this here for now, but um, when I this is dried a little bit, I'll pick the whole thing up and I'll add ice melt to the back of kind of connecting the cookie to the overhanging pieces, so the chimney and the birdhouse that way. And now we're just going to grab some paints. You can use any kind of edible paints that you want. I'm going to be using a mixture of Simi Color Splash colors, uh, the Sugar Art Powder colors, and some gel colors. Okay, so I have my brown here. This is a brown, uh, deep brown petal dust. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to First, dry dust in the lines a little bit, and you can be as precise or messy as you want for these pieces, but I'm just going to kind of add, just kind of going with the grooves and with the lines. I may add just a couple of drops of color solution, uh, which is from the Sugar Art, or you can use alcohol, clear alcohol, just to help it be a little bit more intense. 
you can paint before you put the elements on too so if you're having trouble kind of painting around everything you can definitely do it that way as well and I'm just gonna go kind of fast for this just for time's sake but you guys will be able to take as much time as you like and I'm leaving some of the white showing through I don't want it to be completely brown at least for my design I want it to be almost like a wood grain because they have a very textured sort of stem and then the same thing the main thing is just to go with the grain of the lines and the direction of the lines that you put on okay so I'm just kind of going over all those and the more powder that you add the darker it's going to be so if you decide you want to really intensify some areas you can just do more powder like that so add a little bit to the bases of the mushrooms as well so that they match I'm gonna take a bigger brush wider brush and I'm really going to make this a little bit darker and more intense by adding more powder and we're gonna paint that all in the crevices of these door and window pieces I'll even go in probably once this is dry with a little bit of black just in the indents of the windows to create the depth of looking in or you can um, paint yellow in there if you kind of avoid painting with the brown in those areas give it a really cute sort of glowing window look you can pour ice melt in those little areas if you wanted to although they are pretty tiny okay same thing on the door I'm painting with the grain as well as against the grain to make sure it's totally covered Trying to get in all the crevices here without covering anything up with my hand. <laughs> and again, I'm just going fast so that you guys can see the whole step-by-step -step process. Okay. And then just adaptations for changing up the design. You could do the birdhouse a different shape. So you could do more of a circular. You can do a tiny little mushroom shaped birdhouse. How cute would that be? Kind of like how you, when you have a birdhouse, it's the same look as your house. I think that would be really cute. Um, you can do different styles of windows. You can go more modern with this rather than super cottagey, or you can go more medieval if you wanted to. It would be really, really cute. Uh, let's see, we're going to do a little bit of green. Okay, I'm just using a little bit of green gel color. You can use your CV color splash. You can use powdered colors, whatever you like with some dilution. I'm going to paint those on here. And I do a lot of coats when I paint, so I don't just kind of stop here. I let it dry completely and then add another coat so you can add some highlights onto the piece. Get a little bit bigger brush. Um, you can go back and add shadows around the edges. Or, like I said, you can also pre-color the paste if you want to save yourself a step. Nice bright green looks really cute and very earthy with the red. Which I like, sort of the contrast of the red and green. There we go. little bits and then let's see I also need to do the chimney with some of that brown what I'll do is I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll go over it with some white just to catch some of the details and I like using dust with the alcohol or the color solution because it almost gives it like a wood texture the way it stains it And 
looking at this upside down, so hopefully I get all the edges and things. Add a little bit sort of in the indent between the two pieces. And a little bit on the top edge, so it has a slight shadow. I don't like to be too neat with this because I feel like it's a mushroom. It's probably in the woods, in the forest. It doesn't need to be too perfect. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my base white now and just go over some of the high points. And I usually just go back and forth with this over and over. Let me shake this first. So it... Joni says she loves there. the pen knives from Icing Images too. Oh, I know. They're my favorite. I use them for everything. Is that one of the brushes from Innovative Sugar Works? Yeah, these are the Innovative Sugar Works brushes. I love, love, love their brushes. If you're looking for some really good detail brushes, Innovative Sugar Works has some really nice ones. Donald says, hey, Sydney. Hi, Donald. And Amy's here. Evelyn. Thanks, this guys. Is adorable. Excited to make it. Oh, I can't wait to see you guys' pieces. Mimi says, adorable. Thank you. Melissa's here. So I'm just adding back some highlights. And like I said, I don't definitely don't stop here. I keep going and adding darker and lighter. I just don't want to keep you guys here all day because it definitely took me at least a whole hour in itself to go back and forth between the light and the dark. And add some onto the vines and things. And then the little dots for the mushrooms, you can go back to the back of your paintbrush or you can use a little ball tool. I have these really cute tiny ball tools that I'll just dip into my face white, try and do this so you guys can kind of see it, and just add those little polka dots. It's easier to use a ball tool for circles than a brush. As soon as I learned that trick, I never went back to trying to make these with a brush. And I don't worry if they're perfect circles, or um, if they're perfectly spaced either. And there we go, and that just adds like a really cute sort of whimsical touch to the piece. All right, so I would keep going back and forth and kind of highlighting some more than others um, and going back and forth with the colors, but we will make sure that after we're done with that, we spray it with the edible glaze spray. Let's see if I can pick it up without these falling off. So that's the kind of quick version one that I did today just to show you all of the details and how I got each of the pieces on. So I'd go back after that dries and just use my lighter toned browns and um, some darker tone, probably some black, to really make sure that those indents are contrasting from the other. And then here is our finished, after all of the shading and all of the kind of going back and forth with the different paints. Ta-da! So you get that really pretty sort of stained glass top to it that the cello sheets just go so, so easy, um, just makes it look really pretty. I have some other color variations um, of those designs, and I have some more coming that I've been working on. So um, I really like that kind of geometrical shape and style. I just think it looks really, really pretty. I'm going to move this off here so you can see them next to each other. Super duper fun. What do you guys think? Oh, they love it. Yay! And I can't wait to see you guys. Just make sure you post it and tag me or post it in the See Me Torch team. If you're a member, if you're not, definitely join because um, they come out so much fun. It's just so much fun to see each other's how they come out. So Jackie was wondering if it was a mold. She got here late. <laughs> um, so the background is a cookie. Um, so we used a template to bake our cookie and then cover it in fondant or gum paste or modeling chocolate. And then the only part on this that's a mold is going to be our doors and windows, our cottage doors and windows. Uh, everything else is either hand sculpted or we used the ice melt and the transfer sheets to get the stained glass effect. Everybody loves it. Yay! Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to pick you back up here in just a second. All right, tell you guys a couple of announcements that we have before we go. And I have our next play date piece as well to show you. All right, so I'm so glad that you guys like it. I'm just looking through the comments now. Let me know any final questions that you have, or as always, if you're watching the replay or you're doing this later, you can definitely message me with any Isomalt related or this project related questions that you have. I'm always happy to answer them or direct you to somewhere you can find the answer if I don't know. 
Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I have a cheat sheet here because we got lots of stuff as always going on, so I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, let's see. Let's go over our next upcoming classes and live streams that we have going on. So um, our uh, this was our Icemalt live stream play date, and I have our sneak peek of our next play date that I think I put live. Did I put it live? Uh, I think I put it live, but if not, I'll put it live on the website. Um, I have our pieces over here. I had a cute little dish to stage them and everything, but then I forgot to put them together, so I'm just going to show you. Um, we are going to be creating our cactus lollipops. I yes. had so much fun making it's these. On there. Oh, it is on there. Okay, good. Um, I had so much fun making these, um, and this is with a brand new cactus mold. So this whole pot and the cactus uh, here, and then we're going to be using our sprinkles and our ice mold and another new little mm -hmm. cactus mold um, to make these lollipops. I'm going to show you all how I do it, how I layer colors, how to use sprinkles correctly in your ice mold and make sure they don't melt, um, and then we're going to be painting them and making them into lollipops. So this uh, cactus mold and the mini cactus mold are live on our website now, as well as the discounted play date uh, kit. So if you want to join me for another one of these um, play dates. I would love it. I have so much fun with you guys on here and then seeing all of your pieces afterwards that you create using the inspiration from the project is really fun. But I just love this. How cute is this? And you can also make these in chocolate. You can make them in, uh, they are in ice mold, but you can make them in cookie. Uh, you can leave it without the stick because it's not just a lollipop mold. It's just the, the um, potted cactus mold. So you can customize this to whatever project you like. I think this would be so cute on cupcakes too. I definitely think jello shots. Oh, jello shots. That's a great <laughs> idea. I think I might have to do that. <laughs> so yeah, super cute. We could do them like a spicy, like a cayenne jello yeah, yeah. shot or something like that. That would be really Did cute. Did you say bacon? Fireball it? maybe? Bacon it cookie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can bake it in cookie too. So you can actually bake right in the mold and uh, make it in cookie. And I just added a little bit of paint and detail and I'll show you how I get all of that together as well as our cute simple lollipops because you guys know I like to do kind of like a focal point and then some accent lollipops. But I think those tiny cactus are so cute. They have the little flower on the side. You can kind of see their little red flower. So uh, we're going to be going over how to do those on our next live play date, which is going to be the 15th, I believe, the 15th oh, of yeah, April. Oh, it is it? Oh, it's on the cheat sheets. So 15th of April is going to be our um, next live play date, just like this. So it's totally free to watch. You can use any of your products you already have at home. Or if you'd like, we do a 20% discounted project kit for all of these live streams and my online classes that you can get um, to go along with it. So if you want to play along with me, that would be super fun. It'll be at 2 p.m. EST again. Um, so make sure to join me. And then we have our, oh yeah, our next Zoom class is going to be, uh, I believe it's in a week, right? Two. two weeks. Two weeks. Um, our next... 26. Uh, 26. Okay, thank you. Our next Zoom class, that one is going to be on Zoom, um, or you can also watch the pre-recorded version afterwards. We'll come out of it. We are going to be making our super cute ice cream dish. This is kind of a retro and cartoon style inspired. I wanted to jump on the cartoon cake trend because I love it so much, but of course I wanted to put my own twist on it. So we're doing a blown ice cream dish. Um, actually, the dish is one of our brand new molds or vintage coupe style champagne glass, but uh, the ice cream is actually blown. And then we're going to be making our cute little checkerboard base and all of the other details. The cherry is blown as well. So uh, really, really good if you want to sort of get into working with blown ice melt and hand sculpted ice melt, but it'll also have a ton of other um, kind of things you can add to it and modifications if you're a little bit more advanced into working with ice melt. So that one's going to be super duper fun. There, You can still sign up on my website, but you do have to sign up for that one um, to make sure that you save your spot. And that one is going to be in two weeks on Sunday. Um, and that one you can also watch pre-recorded, like I said. So if you can't make the live class, uh, you can also watch the pre-recorded version. It comes with access to both in every sign up. All right, so um, what else do we have? Our, we're going to have more info on my next Zoom class as well because it is one of the most requested projects that I uh, have gotten. It's an in-person class that I've done. A lot of people have been asking for it, so I will have more info on that. It's going to be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put some more probably out mm -hmm. about that. I won't tell you guys what it is just yet, but um, I'm very excited about it because it is one of the most requested projects that I've gotten, both in person and online. So stay tuned for that. Keep your ears and eyes open. Um, I'll be posting about that very That's soon. That's April. That's for April, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, if you're going to be at That Takes the Cake, we will have a booth there. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be there. Um, I'm in a wedding that weekend um, for one of my best friends, but my mom and dad are going to be there. They're going to be running the booth, so make sure that you go With visit Dawn. them. Yeah, and we have Dawn, the amazing Don Butler is going to be there doing some demonstrations, uh, so make sure that you go and check it out. We'll have all of our awesome ice molds and molds and tools there, as well as some awesome demos if going they on. Need to, if they need to pre-order 
uh, probably get that into us this week. Yes, if you want to pre-order anything for us to bring, because we will bring all of our best sellers, but we won't have absolutely everything. Um, or if you just want to make sure you have it and it doesn't sell out, make sure that you send me a message or an email this week so that uh, we have that ready for you and we can put it off to the side for you. Um, and yeah, uh, also in SoFlo, that one I will be at too. We will all be there uh, at SoFlo. So if we will see you there, uh, we will have a booth. So make sure that you come say hi. That one's on April 29th and 30th in uh, Miami, Florida. And Isla posted the thattakesthecake.org. There's a lot of really great classes. Perfect. There. Yeah, make sure that you go check out those classes. Um, there is some absolutely amazing, amazing teachers coming. Um, a really awesome competition. Make sure you go to the competition and uh, go see all the awesome vendors. I'm so sad to miss it this year, but I uh, definitely can't wait to see all the pictures. Dawn's teaching the uh, barrel cake that yeah. you can actually pour from. Yeah, that project is just incredible. They're, um, Dawn's actual pourable barrel cake. So And she definitely. also posted the SoFlo Cake and Candy Expo. Thank you, Kyla. You are on top of it. <laughs> uh, all right, and then CookieCon Ohio is coming up as well. We unfortunately will not be at CookieCon Ohio. We will be in Orlando, um, but never fear because Icing Images will have our products there, so you can definitely get your see me ice melt fix uh, at cookie con ohio plus there'll be some awesome demos going on at their booth using ice melt i know tammy varela will be using it um, and some other awesome stuff so make sure that you go check that and many out teachers. um yeah tons of different teachers uh doing the classes uh, and the workshops are going to be using see me ice melt too so that's very exciting um, let's see, we are scheduling some in-person classes for this year, which I cannot wait to start traveling more again. Um, we have in the works so far, uh, we have classes in the works for New Jersey, um, let's see, Jersey Shore. At the Jersey Shore Cake Show. Yeah, at the Jersey Shore Cake Show. Uh, we have Orlando Cookie Con, New York, North Carolina, New Orleans, Texas, and Utah just to start. So we are in the works for all of those locations for hopefully this year, um, at the earliest and I am super excited to come and see you guys in person more this year because um, I definitely miss seeing you guys for in-person classes so stay tuned for more info about that I will post about all of that in the torch team and on my pages to so make sure you follow me uh, if you don't already we'll also be uh, in CI and Nottingham for this year uh, for Kick Internationals uh, in the UK so uh, um, hopefully we'll get to see you guys Dawn's in Nottingham. yeah we're gonna do a retreat um, with Dawn and Nottingham so uh, super duper excited about that hopefully we'll get to see you guys there um, Joni said where do we find info for MC? We don't have the details yet. Everything's um, been sent out to our hosts. Yeah, so, so we're just waiting to hear back on dates and cl which classes we're doing and things like that. But as soon as I have it, I will post about it. And you can always check our website too because we put our um, upcoming classes list on there. Um, mm -hmm. So you can check that if you uh, are worried you're going to miss something online. Just check my website and we'll put any upcoming in-person classes on there as well as online. All right, and then let's see, we're also going to have news of our next See Me Retreat coming very soon. We are working on all of the fine details for that, and we're almost uh, got it all together. So if you would like to come and join us in sunny Cocoa Beach, Florida in January, save the date. We're going to do Martin Luther King weekend again. Uh, that seemed to work out pretty week, good for a week. week. After. Yep, sorry, week after, um, after Martin Luther King weekend. Um, we're going to be doing that again. So if you want to come and join us, we're going to have some so, so much fun with our classes and uh, events going on. Um, so yeah, that will be in January. Hold on. Yes, Carol. I always forget. This is this is such an honor. Carol said, "Don't forget to vote for Seamy Cakes for Retailer of the Year." Oh yeah, I am so blown away. I think I still can't even believe it. I didn't even uh, that I forgot to talk about it. Um, yeah, please vote for the American Cake Awards. We were nominated for Retailer Retailer of the Year. Uh, we're very very honored you to can be in that vote category. Three times, but there's some awesome yeah. ones. Uh, icing images, icing inspirations. Yes. Um, yeah, Sweet Chalet. Sweet Chalet. Yeah, so make sure that you go on and vote, and uh, there's lots of other I know we're categories. Missing a couple, though. Who are we missing? Uh, let's see, Evil K Evil Genius. Genius. Yeah, so um, definitely please go on and vote uh, if you would like. We would very much All appreciate amazing. your vote. And I believe Kyla's That Takes the Cake is also nominated. Don't forget to vote for Yay! Best Cake Shows. Definitely, yeah, there's tons of stuff on there, um, tons of different amazing, amazing nominations in, in those categories. So make sure that you go on there and vote, and we would appreciate your vote, too, um, for Best Retailer or Retailer of the Year. Um, it would be very nice. All right. Yeah, nothing's there just yet, um, but it will be as soon as we have all the details. I promise it's coming soon. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. And we also have some really exciting stuff coming to the Torch team soon. Uh, we have a new Torch team logo and we're going to have some merch coming out. So if you are a proud Torch team member, uh, we will have some fun ways for you to show that off coming very soon. Um, we just wrapped up all the entries for our online competition, which yes, I'm so excited it was about. You guys just are 
absolutely blew me away. Um, I am not a judge for it, but I am uh, have submitted all of the entries to the judges, and so they will be working on that this week, and all the winners will be announced via Facebook, uh, the Simi Cakes Facebook page on Friday, um, so a week from I'm yesterday. I'm so glad we're not judging. I could not judge this. So you guys just blew it out of the park, so I'm really excited to see who wins, uh, but you also should be very, very proud of yourself, and I know it was a lot of people's first time entering a competition, too, so um, I'm very proud of you guys, and you guys should be very proud of yourself as well. Kyla has fun ideas for something for next year for our retreat goodie bag. Oh, I can't wait. Kyla made these absolutely amazing acrylic turntables oh, for our goodie fabulous. bags this year. Um, amazing, amazing. So thank you very much, Kyla. We appreciate yeah. you. And we will have a lot of fun things for her goodie bags for their um, Capital Confectioners mm -hmm. Day sharing again this year. Yes, absolutely. So this summer. Is Kyla number one unsupervised at her show? <laughs> I think so. You, you better keep an eye on mom and dad because they are going to be unsupervised, but that takes the cake. So everybody go and check in on them. <laughs> all right. It's perfect. I think I don't think I'm missing anything, am I? All good? All right. It's perfect. So thank you guys so much. I hope that you enjoyed um, watching and that you learned a lot and that you will uh, join me for another tutorial. Again, our next one is going to be on April 15th at 2 p.m. EST making our super cute uh, cactus lollipops. So the way to get over taxes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, make sure you tag me in pictures or post them in the See Me Torch team when you create this project because I would love to see it and let me know any questions that you guys have. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy Saturday. And thank you so, so much for watching. Bye, I will everybody. see you guys later. Bye. Bye.